Good evening. Welcome to the October 19th Board of Selectmen's meeting. The meeting is being audio <coughs> and video recorded. If you'd please stand and join us in the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The first item on the agenda is for the town planner. Um, and coordinator of inspectional services is Tracy. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Welcome back, Tracy. Thank you. Um, David, did you just want to go over quickly the process? I will. Oh, or Linda. I didn't see you in there either. Nope. 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 Right yep. No, I will. I, um, Linda could speak in a moment if she'd like to. I just wanted to say that we went through a full hiring process. Uh, we posted for the position after the board approved the job description. As you know, town meeting approved the funding. Uh, and um, I'm very excited um, to be able to offer Tracy the job. Tracy, as you know, used to work for us as the assistant town administrator. She currently works in the planning department in another town. Um, and prior to her uh, working for us, her employment here, she also worked in a law firm that um, specialized in doing zoning work. So she's extremely qualified. She's an attorney by trade. And I can tell you she's an excellent employee. So I am very excited to recommend her. And Linda, if there's anything else you want to add? I would just, the same thing. Um, I think she would be an asset to the town of West Bridgewater. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, did anyone have any questions or comments for Tracy? No, I don't know if we've actually officially met before, but it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Other than I wish you never left, and I'm very <laughs> happy to have you back. The feeling's mutual. <laughs> Okay, so is there a motion to ratify um, the employment contract for Tracy Aldrich? So oh, I would to ratify the employment and the employment contract, please. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And up next is the ratification of employment and for the employment contract for Christine Eaton, who has had the opportunity to serve as the um, interim executive assistant for a few months now um, to appoint her as permanent. Yeah, and again, I just want to say this as well. Christina's done a really nice job. We always expected her to be interim, uh, but as you know, the full-time person left, um, and so she's done a really nice job. However, even though we watched her and we knew she could do the job, she was still subject to the same hiring process that everybody else was. So we still posted the job after receiving approval from you for the job description and the posting. Um, she, uh, we had other people that we interviewed, and she was selected as the best candidate. And again, I'm very excited to be able to um, uh, recommend her as well to the board. Yep. Thank you, David. I'm happy and excited to see that Christine's staying on the team. Thank you. Frank. Happy to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, and make a motion that we ratify the employment and execute the employment contract for the executive assistant, Christine Eaton. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and the assistant uh, library director, Rebecca Fleet. Um, Melanie, did you want to introduce? Sure. Um, this is Rebecca Fleet. She was the best candidate for the position that we posted last month. Um, uh, she's a young adult librarian in Taunton, and I worked with her for a few years. Oh and I think she'll be a great asset to the community. I'm very excited to have her. Great. Thank you. Um, Linda, do you have anything to add on the? I don't. I, I was served on the committee with Melanie and uh, Deborah and Castor as well. And again, she was the best candidate, and I think she was doing an excellent job as well. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No, that's this great. This time around, we followed the three time policy. Well, I'm happy to see I everybody want, working I together. I want that in the record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The new, the new time policy. Thank you. Good. Thank well, you. Thank you all for working together. I know that was. Yeah, Linda was a real asset to the hiring committee, and we were glad to have her with us. She does a nice job. Yes, she, she really does. does. Yes. Well, welcome. <laughs> and I make a motion that we ratify the employment and execute the employment contract for the assistant library director, Rebecca Wade. Second. On favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. It's official, Rebecca. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, if you'd like to introduce the next three. Which one? <coughs> uh, we'll start with Kyle McNeil. Kyle McNeil. 
when I sit up front, Kyle. As you know, we have a uh, full-time position opening with uh, Matt Montero um, moving on to East Bridgewater. Um, the good thing about this transfer, he's an excellent candidate. We put, he's been eight or nine years with Sharon Police Department. Um, he went through an extensive background check here, um, regardless of his background being in Sharon, came through with flying colors. And the best part of this is that he was basically recruited by our guys. So it's nice to see that our guys are trying to pick quality people. So Kyle was, uh, like I said, has been through complete background. And I had a long talk with him, interview with him about a week ago, and he's an excellent candidate. It'd be a good fit. Great. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Um, questions? No, those are excellent remarks. I mean, I couldn't speak higher. So congratulations to you. Thank you. So how long were you in Sharon for again, Kyle? Um, I got hired full-time as a dispatcher in 14, 2014. Uh, made a patrolman in 2015. And uh, I grew up in Sharon. Um, but in 2015, I moved here with my wife. We started our family, and you know they're getting into the town sports, and she's into the you know, on the uh, youth association for, okay. the, for the athletes. Uh, she's on the board, um, so kind of made this our home, and you know we like it here, so we want to stay. So it's a great town. Mm -hmm. It is. We have a good community. Yeah. And when your own team's poaching you from somewhere else, that's also a good indicator yeah, yeah, that you'll work well with the team. I honestly <laughs> don't even know how it happened, just word of mouth, and then I was here. So yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to appoint Kyle McNeil as full-time police officer? And I would just ask to make it subject to a medical exam. He'll be going next week for Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Kelly. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to meet you. We're going to do the interviews for the permanent commitments. Yes. Who do you want? Um, Stephen or Brian? Stephen, please. Stephen. I'll give you a little background so you can sit up for Stephen. Stephen's been with us for a few years as a dispatcher. Um, worked out really, really well tested and was um, on the high end of the the mass civil service list. What we're doing here is we're creating a local list. Um, they went through extensive backgrounds, both Steve and Brian, and two quality people, and basically we're creating this list for the next full-time people. Um, so, and we get time to look at, we know Steve for the last two years, we're gonna do a Sam and Brian, see how they fit with our group, see how they develop, and then it will go on from there. Hopefully, they'll be the next one sitting in front of you for a full-time position. Questions? No, what, what made you interested in this? Well, I went to Bridgewater State University, got a degree in criminal justice. My grandfather was the chief in Brockton, so I grew up around him being in the law enforcement field. Uh, I've always been interested in doing it. That's great. Do you live locally or? I live in West Bridgewater now. Okay. Um, I moved, when I was at Bridgewater State, I lived off campus for a year, 2018 to 2019. After that, I met my girlfriend in that period of time. She lives in West Bridgewater. Once I moved out of my apartment, moved in with her, and I've been here since then, 2019. You'll never want to leave. I can see why. <laughs> um, is there a motion? I make a motion that we um, appoint Permanent intermittent. Um, I don't want to butcher your, your name. Steve D'Amelio. Did I do that close? Yep. <laughs> Stefano, but yeah, Sorry. That, that works. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Well, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. And the second interview, Brian. Again, Brian's a, a lifelong resident of West Bridgewater. We live here. Um, interviewed really well. Presently going for his degree in criminal justice. Um, his father was a police officer. Um, did very well in the background. Um, and like I said, now we get time to look at Brian and see if he's a fit with our department going forward. Hopefully, like I said, these would be very quick uh, full-time appointments. Yeah. Okay. We have people leaving, so we we got to not rush, but we have a little time to make sure that. 
a perfect fit. Um, what made you interested in, in this force, particularly? So, like the chief said, my father was a police officer, my grandfather was a police officer, so I have family background of law enforcement. Um, I grew up in this town, I lived here my whole life, and there's no other place I'd rather be. I second that. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you're pursuing your degree in yes, criminal law? right now at Westfield State. Okay. Yep. Anything else? No, I'd like to make a motion that uh, Brian Smith Jr. is appointed as a permanent intermittent. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. We're a couple minutes ahead for the public hearing. Um, you guys don't have to stick around. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Vote to appoint Tim Hay to the Bylaw Study Committee and Recreational Space Committee. This is to um, fill John Delano's um, spots on those two committees. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote to appoint Priscilla Pratt to the Council on Aging Board. Um, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we have a number of resignations. Um, Brenda Caffiello, Janet Carlson, and Keith Borges. There a motion to accept those three resignations with a letter of thanks. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, vote to appoint the following department heads as record access officers. Um, Ann Williams, Board of Assessors. Um, Melanie Terrell, Library, and Tim Hay, Conservation Commission. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, vote to sign the election warrant. Uh, this is, I believe, for the November 8th, is it? Yes. Election? Um, is there a, a motion? So moved. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me for a minute, Anthony. Yes. Ben, is the camera working? Because the TV's not on. No, it's off right now because I have to. We're kind of running double duty right now. Oh, okay. So all right. So I have to take board and put them on there. Okay. Thank you. Right, um, early voting. So this is here. It's just a um, an FYI to the board and also to the general public. Is that for the general election that will be held on November eighth? We have two weeks of early voting here at the town hall. You can see before you that it will be open the same hours as the town hall during the week, with the addition that there will be two Saturdays that people could come in and, and vote as well. This is the same ballot that you would be able to cast um, on November 8th. You just get to be able to do it earlier or do it whatever is, is at your leisure. I just also want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Annie. You know, Annie's a full-time elected clerk, um, and I do personally believe that the state has made this pretty unfair on most of our election divisions throughout the state, but Annie in particular. Um, she gets paid zero. She's an elected person. So she has to be here on Saturdays all those times beforehand and afterwards. Um, she's basically running an election every single day for two weeks, and she'll be here on those weekends. So, you know, we're lucky to have her. Uh, there will be other staff that will be there as well, Sharon Ladine and some pay, uh, poll workers. They fortunately will get paid. Um, but again, Sharon now works six days a week for those two weeks. So I just want to say thank you to them. They do a really good job. Um, thank you, David. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll move back to the um, public hearing. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 19th, 2022 at 6.45 p.m. on the joint petition of the Massachusetts Electric Company doing business as National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated to install one new pole on North Elm Street, West Bridgewater. The hearing will be held in Town Hall, Eldon Marrera Boarding, the Board of Selectmen Meeting Room, second floor, 65 North Main Street, West Bridgewater. Um, and this was published October 7th, 2022. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there someone from? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. If you just, um, you can stand or sit there. Totally up to you. Yes, we're performing to install a new um, Instagram pole between uh, pole 17 and 16 on North Elm Street. 
te filen. Doe we. Uh, zijn we filen? Uh, de de 510 North Elm Street. Dat is een visionaire. Oké. Okay. Um, it is a public hearing. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak for or against? Nope. Um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, is there any question or comment on this or a motion? I make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Approval of the meeting minutes of September 7th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And accept for review of the meeting minutes of September 21st, 21st 2022. So moved. Second. Um, David, do you want to go over the mit um, hazard mitigation plan? Yep. So real quickly, and, I, and Chris is here as DPW director. I asked him to be here in case you had an additional question. Um, um, bottom line is, is that we are required under FEMA's regulations to make sure we have a hazard mitigation plan on record with them. We had one in 2016, uh, in the new one in 2021. Uh, we had, we received a grant from the state. We hired Ty and Bond, they did all the work. It's about 400 pages thick. Basically it says as to what the town will do, and uh, will be responsible for if there are any climate resiliency issues or climate related issues uh, that occur. Um, we approved it earlier in the year. We have sent it off to FEMA, or Chris sent it off to FEMA. Chris has received the re approval back from FEMA, and at this point, uh, they are just looking for the Board of Selectmen to certify the resolution of adoption. Chris, did I get all that right, or did I miss anything? Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Okay, so is there a motion? I make a motion to certify adoption of the town's hazard mitigation plan. So, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next on the agenda is discussion, reimburse, uh, reimbursement to town administrator for vandalism to his personal vehicle while on town business. Um, this was really brought about by a recent um, news story. Um, in December of 2021, the town administrator had requested the board um, reimburse for damage done to his vehicle. Um, in front of us is an email that um, he had sent for the request. Um, I will briefly summarize it. Um, on October 14th, 2021, the town administrator purchased a um, 2019 Audi A6. Um, there were no scratches or other defects on the vehicle. On Seven days later, on October 21st, um, while attending a meeting um, with the DPW director, Chris Hanatelli, and the consulting um, town engineer, Jim Noyes. Um, he had um, parked the vehicle at Dempsey property. Um, they had walked um, the Lincoln Street property um, for, I believe, a couple hours. I'm not sure if the um, developer was present or not, um, but it was um, in regards to the change of street location and the develop potential development on Lincoln Street. Um, at some point during while the car was parked um, in the Dempsey property, it's apparent that it was keyed um, or vandalized. Um, the town administrator requested that he be in reimbursed for the damage um, because it was done while on town, town time. Um, reasonably assumed that it was because of his role as town administrator. Uh, none of the other vehicles there were damaged. Um, we have two reliable witnesses that um, can attest to the damage not being present um, when the vehicle arrived. Um, I know that it was looked into a little bit. Um, David consulted with the police chief um, to see if there was any security footage in the area, which there was not. Um, the Typically, the town administrator has the ability to sign off on invoices on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. This one because it financially impacts him directly, was placed on our desk for signature. Um, two of the three board members um, signed the invoice, approving the request, and it was paid for. Um, any other comments? 
So I think my, my comment is that, you know, this was an unfortunate set of events, and it bothered me seeing it on the television and hearing about it without all of the facts being in place. And we routinely sign bills. That's part of what we do, and I assume the majority of the public trusts us in signing those bills. And just because one selectman doesn't vote in favor doesn't mean the, the event shouldn't be, that our judgment shouldn't be trusted. It was just a disagreement. Um, all of the facts were not published, which, again, is another unfortunate set of circumstances. I mean, just looking at the economics of it, he has a $1,000 deductible. Even if the town had, uh, or the Board of Selectmen had said, well, we'll meet you halfway, we'll pay your deductible, we're going to sit here and squabble over $200? Let's, let's move on with life. Um, the fact that it, it's irrelevant, in my opinion, that two out of three of us voted on it. It bothered me more to see it on television and hear some of the comments being made. So um, I'm glad it was put on the agenda. It's unfortunate that those out in the public that had some very negative comments didn't take the opportunity to come here and express their opinion on policy. It's an open door. It's always been an open door. Uh, with that, I'm not sure if we need a policy for anomalies. Anomalies need to be handled fact-based, and, and the probability of a situation like this occurring again, I think, is slim to none with the same fact pattern of people being there and being able to say it wasn't there before. So I, I'm not convinced we need a policy per se. I think it's more a fact of when situations like this occur, um, we continue to use our best judgment to make decisions. And again, the fact that two of us vote in favor and one doesn't isn't a reflection of pretty much anything in my opinion, just that there's a difference of opinion. It doesn't change the facts of what we voted on. That's accurate. I'm what I am the selectman that voted against it. I'm not saying any of that was uh, incorrect. I voted no based on the policy. I felt that it would not. I would not have changed my vote depending on who the employee was. So I felt it as a policy and as a way of setting example. I didn't see in favor of it. It's not me fighting or trying to put anyone down or say that anything is not clear here, or is anything is not as it seems. Um, I do want to correct, correct one item you said. You said uh, I was given the opportunity to sign, and I wasn't. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. Good. All right. Um, <laughs> the next item is public comment period. Anyone from the public have anything? No? All right. Yeah, actually, uh, what I think that there needs to be some sort of a clear um, policy for if this happens going forward, because we currently have about, I think the count was about seven town employees that need access to a vehicle during the day for town business, and we have one, maybe two. So there are town employees using their personal vehicles. That's happening. That's going to happen. What if they get into an accident? It may be an anomaly. Yeah. People get into accidents every day, though. So seven people, the odds of them getting into an accident, one of them, while on town time doing town business in their personal vehicles, that, that could happen again. What's the policy going to be? Are they Just responsible because they're not given a vehicle for their own damage, but they're on town time? So do we buy seven cars? Are we certain the car was not available for use? I don't know that, but we're going to assume that we trust our employees, right? Because we hire them, we pay them, we give them responsibilities, we trust them. So, employee says he needed to use his vehicle, we trust that. Employee says scratch wasn't there before, we trust that. Employee should get paid for that work because they shouldn't be responsible for it because they have no other alternative. They have to work. They have to drive to get to the work or the job. What's the alternative then? Is there coverage in our auto insurance for the town? For personal vehicles? Because that would be what you would have to look into then because then it would have been covered because he was on town time. 
So somebody would have paid somewhere at any point, but it wouldn't have been David, it would have been the town. So the same thing would have happened. So what should be the policy going forward? It's inevitable, like this may happen again, like <laughs> this could happen again. This isn't that crazy to think of. What's gonna be the policy? Are we then gonna we still have like warring is. selectmen about whether or not we believe the story or it happened on town time or maybe he had access, maybe he didn't? Are we gonna question our employees like that every single time or are we gonna have a policy? Or are we gonna give them each a vehicle? So my opinion, it would be financially, it w wouldn't be, just doesn't make sense to go out and buy six vehicles and, have, and, and the taxpayer is paying for that in insurance and, and they sit in the parking lot. I mean, you could have a day where they could all be out because there's inspectional services, David has to be somewhere, we have voting, plus we have volunteers. You, you have um, the, the staff that goes down and handles the voting. So we, we cannot buy a whole bunch of vehicles to suit these purposes. We're West Bridgewater. We're, we're not Boston, number one. Number two, this was, I think this situation, again, I'm looking at the fact pattern here. And if this was a, just a, somebody ran into someone, you know, backing up their car, hit, it was a tap, that's a probable type of situation. And in that event, I would have leaned towards no, you use your insurance because it's probable when you park in a parking lot that your car is going to be hit. We all take that risk. It's not probable that you park in a parking lot at a business that's barely open and your car is keyed up the side. And two people were present before it was keyed and can state that wasn't there and then it was. So th it, I think each situation has to be evaluated. Now that doesn't mean we don't need to come up with some guidelines maybe. Um, and I would, I would like to ask David and Linda maybe to look at this. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people are out at a given time? Maybe you can talk to some of the other department heads sure. and, and come up with some guidelines and have an understanding with the employees. It's not uncommon for a private company to have employees out at any given time going to webinars mm -hmm. or uh, customer visits and using their personal cars. Uh, so that's not uncommon. They don't have cars sitting out there for everyone to use. But one of the things I think we've always tried to stress is that we want West Bridgewater to be a good employer. So we don't want our employees being hung out to dry when something completely unexpected that no one would have thought of occurs to any of their property. So maybe that's something we can look at and they can come to us with uh, some ideas. But again, this was, uh, no one would expect that. And if the fact pattern was different and Chris and Jim weren't able to say, I was there, I looked at the car, I didn't see that there. Um, and it's not uncommon when someone gets a new car to stand outside and I'm not saying you're a show off, David, but to show off their new car. It's a nice car. So you do, you would notice a key, uh, uh, that the car was keyed down the side. That would be probably the first thing they say. So that's what I'm thinking, towards a set of guidelines maybe. And, and the, the employees should have full disclosure that if you use your vehicle during town time and it's a probable type of situation, someone backs into you then that would be something we'd expect you to go through your insurance on. But I don't know how many ac how many accidents or situations have we had with personal vehicles? We have not, but they do use them a lot. And, um, we have multiple inspectors in town that all use their personal vehicles. We have part-time inspectors that use their uh, vehicles. Our treasurer goes to the bank on average almost every day. Um, in uh, sometimes only three to four times a week, but on average almost every day. So he's out, as you said, when we have elections, the town clerk is using her personal vehicle. It would be impossible for us to have a fleet of six, seven, eight cars for everybody. But I also think that it would be unfair that if Scott Golder goes to the bank and he comes out and his car gets keyed, 
we're going to say so sad, sorry. Yeah, I think I think we've got to balance that with uh, to can anyone attest to the fact that there was no scratch to begin with? Um, because we just can't go with it doesn't it, my just, car get key. It doesn't just affect town hall employees. I mean, the police chief has police officers who use their personal vehicle to go to court, for example. Yeah. So when they get called to testify, and unfortunately, many times, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're supposed to be there if they um, was it rushed to get to court and wait. Um, but you get, oh, yeah. you, know, you, you, uh, you get there at 9 o'clock, you think you're going to testify at 11, and 4 o'clock they say come back tomorrow. Um, so we can't just have extra police cars. Um, you know, there, there has to be, in my opinion, there just has to be a reasonable give and take on this. Um, and so I don't know, I mean, I'll, I'm, I, I wrote it down, I believe you want us to try to come up with some guidelines, but I do think it's going to be a little bit difficult because this was an anomaly that hopefully will never occur again. But I really want to be fair to our employees that if they're using their vehicle, and although they can by law put in for mileage, I can tell you most of them don't. And I think it's just because they really like their employment here, they feel good, it's a good employer. As you said to the earl offices earlier, this is a good, uh, good town. And we also have to be good, employee, uh, good employers. And if they're not even going to put in for miles, and then they have damage to their car, and then we're going to say sorry. I'm not exactly sure that that's a good employer at that point. So may maybe, you know what, the best approach, in my opinion, is talk to the employees that frequently use their own vehicles. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, and and let them know that it's not just going to be a matter of if something happens to their vehicle, it's automatically paid for. It's going to be you know, we're going to have to consider what happened. I really think this is a trivial matter in the grand scheme of things, but um, again, the focus is on being a good employer. And if they express a significant amount of concern, then we have something to address. Can I ask about auto allowances and stipends? How is that handled? And is there a policy that goes with them? Is there a way to marry the two together? Yeah. I mean, like and again, the, the vehicle use, I don't think rises, except for maybe David, I'm not sure the vehicle use rises to the level of stipend. And, and David, I think you do a great job, but I'm not at I, for one, am not interested in adding a stipend for a vehicle for them. No. They should be putting them out. Like the health agent, I would guess, is probably the one who uses his the most, maybe, for inspections. He uses assessors. his quite a bit, but so does But the assessors, the assessors conservation too. agent, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're out there every, I mean, we're a wet town. The conservation agent mm -hmm. is doing daily inspections. Um, granted, where there was COVID, but now before COVID, and now as we get back to norm normal times, you could have police officers in court. Um, you know, our they're out there, they're out there every day. I mean, the the um, if we have seventy-five building permits, all seventy-five building permits, we always focus just on the building inspector who goes out there. But as part of that, the electrical inspector might have to go out, the gas inspector might have to go out, and in every one of those cases the Board of Assessors should be going out as well. Those are three cars. All three people using their personal cars. At the end of the town's cover our inspections, right? East Bridgewater, I'm mm -hmm. in agreement with East Bridgewater. Well, that's a, that's a very good point. So we have um, intermunicipal agreements, so all of our inspectors do. So for example, Rob, our health agent, will be in East Bridgewater at times, and if he's on vacation, they come here. Um, but that is correct. They, they will use their personal car to go outside jurisdiction, but still doing town-related business. Because as a town, we signed that intermunicipal agreement. They're not doing it on their own. In fact, this board signed it. So East Bridgewater's inspectors may not want to come here if they know that they're going to come here and maybe give somebody an unfavorable inspection and have damage done to their car and not be reimbursed for it or even heard on it. And I'm wary of a uh, over correction on this matter based off a poorly written news story. Right. I don't think how much the employee makes should have been brought up. It doesn't matter in, in the news story, not by anyone here. Absolutely no correct. No one should come to work and expect to lose money. That's right. The other thing that's unfortunate is this thing happened over a year ago. 
It was settled, it was signed, it was put to bed. And here we are a year later still dragging it through the mud. The unfortunate thing is David, myself, or any other department head is working day and night for this town. And this is unfortunate and it is wrong. And then of course when you have a news story that's done as a one-sided uh, story, that's just unfortunate. Unfortunately, we're targets. We become people that are easily easy prey to those that don't like us or that just want to drag things through the mud, and that's unfortunate. But it's hard to put in a good day's work every day when you have this distraction going on, mm -hmm. and it's got to stop. Well, I think it's a, a lot of it results because you said no to someone. Yeah. And, and that's when I hear the complaints as well. He said no, but, yeah. but you're doing your job. And, but at the same time, knowing all of you that are in the room that are in a position to take phone calls from the residents, I know you do. And I know you do your very best to try to help them and go out of your way. Uh, but it's never going to change that all you need to do is say no once and it's going to be 10 people who suddenly don't like you. And it's irrelevant. If you do your, you're doing your job, you make a decision, they don't like the answer, that's unfortunate, but you're, you're here to do your job for the masses, not just one individual person. I don't want a commissioner here preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, it's a tough one. I, if anyone, uh, I mean, I can reach out to other towns to see what they do. Well, yeah, maybe um, talk to them, but you know, we're so small, I would, I would say again, I would, Try to talk to some of the employees that do the majority of using their personal vehicle and, and see what their thoughts on the, are on the matter. Um, I would t I would tend to think, and, and maybe I'm incorrect, that most people know they presume, you know, if you get in a car accident or they're in a supermarket and there's a door ding, those are common occurrences. It's on them, but when there's again. Every situation is different. It's not a cookie cutter approach. When you have something that has a fact pattern that is an anomaly, then I think it's something that has to come to us. So I don't know if a policy per se, hard and fast, is the way to go, but something. There has to be something. I agree with that. A policy and maybe looking into the insurances. I just know as uh, in a private business, in our situation, we have an employee handbook that has the policy in it. And then our insurance has to back that up um, so that if someone is out in their personal vehicle, my understanding is um, they're covered through the company because they're out on company time. I don't know how that works with a municipality. You guys would know it's probably that way much more than I would. I just know that's how we're doing it in my own office. Yeah, but Can I say one thing? I wasn't going to say anything, but This was a targeted, malicious, damage. This was a felony. This is not a kid going by. Targeted the employee of us. If they had targeted me or an employer of mine, we wouldn't be sitting here because I already would have done what you did. And most of the time, the warrant's this big you don't see because they're targeting our employees if they did. This is malicious damage. This is, this is a crime. And if we, we need to back our people, I'm going to back all my people because it's the right thing to do. And I don't even understand why we're having this conversation. And just to add one more thing, too, I mean, you know, um, you know, when you mentioned it was targeted, my vehicle, David's, and Chris's were all next to each other. And, you know, as soon as we saw his car was keyed, you know, David was laughing about it, but five seconds later, I'm running around my Jeep to make sure it wasn't keyed. So it was, you know, it wasn't just a random thing. They had three vehicles there, and if somebody wanted to key all three, they could have gone ahead and done it, but they just focused on that one. And to be clear, I wasn't laughing about my car being keyed. I, I was laughing how fast you moved. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I get, you know, again, I'm not sure what the answer is. I think Linda has a task list of things to look at and maybe talk to other towns and then at a later time come back to us. 
I, I'm glad the opportunity to hear from some others on this subject. Uh, we had that tonight. Hopefully, I doubt the newspaper will pick up this meeting and do an expose to add on to what they've already done. Uh, but I hope some residents maybe will learn of what was explained tonight and the fact that one of our employees was targeted, not cool. All right, thank you everyone for your feedback. Town Administrator's report. And just on that, I just wanna say thank you for your support. Um, all right, under Town Administrator's report, um, I just wanted to give Marilyn Mather credit. She's put together a luncheon for our first responders. It will be next Thursday. You can see it's from 11.30 to one. Our first responders actually really do an excellent job. As the chief said, it's all of our collective job to, to support them. Um, and Marilyn is doing that by having this luncheon. So the board is certainly um, uh, invited as well. I unfortunately am gonna be at a labor law seminar, so I will not be there, but I'm just putting, I want to let the board know. Uh, the second thing is, is that a uh, FYI is that we have been meeting for multiple years now Anthony chairs the Recreational Space Committee, of which I'm also a member, and we have been working on trying to make sure that we can bring additional athletic fields to the town. It would be um, soccer fields, football fields, uh, re turf, a baseball field, add eight pickleball courts, and a couple of basketball courts as well, and also create some additional trails. And most of this would go on the Russo complex that we bought a handful of years ago on Lincoln Street. Um, we'll have to secure funding to do it. We have, um, we have worked on it for a handful of years, um, and so we will be before this board on November 2nd. Uh, at that time, we'll be, the Recreational Space Committee will make their presentation. We will ask the board to call a special town meeting right now targeting December 5th. And in the meantime, on November 14th, we will have a public hearing where the Recreational Space Committee will invite all the public in at the auditorium at the middle school, high school. Uh, and that way they can ask questions, go through the entire project, but not have the pressure to take a vote. And that is being modeled as to what we did with the golf course. You remember we had a large public hearing, everybody could spend a couple of hours to look at the plan, ask questions, get their information, but then reserve having to vote on it for a handful of weeks and let it all digest. Um, so just an FYI, they will be bringing that to here. Uh, Anthony, as chair, is there anything else you want to add to that? No, nope, that's all, thank you. Okay. Uh, and the last item is, is that um, the inspectional services consolidation plan, we are still working on it. I am frustrated because it seems that every single time I take two steps forward, I have to take two steps back, but that's what happens in construction. Um, so with that said, um, uh, I was requested from the building commissioner to get a stamped engineering decision that we were able to remove some of the walls. So that tied us up for, for three to four weeks, but that did just come in this past week. Armed with that, I now have to go and get a contractor. I had one, but because of the delay in time, I lost him to another job, so I have to get another contractor or wait. So I'm going through that process, but I want to let you know we're on it, we're committed to it. I think it'll be a really good thing for the town and for the employees, um, and we're still working on it. Do we have a place to put Tracy? <laughs> at, the big, at the police department. <laughs> if, if Already we, we would love to have Tracy there. We, we built the police department for 50 years, so we didn't build it to fit when we moved in. So I have a lovely space if she needs it. Now you're poaching our staff. <laughs> <laughs> Always willing to take one for the team. Aren't you? <laughs> Damn, you're good. Hey, you probably, I didn't even think about it, but this is that problem. <laughs> it's a very professional room. Take him on for the team. Is it team cell? player. Nope. <laughs> I would never put Tracy in jail. Come. All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.